this afternoon along with four air ambulances, one from the Warwickshire and Northamptonshire Air Ambulance Service and three from the Midlands Air Ambulance Service. Of the 16 patients involved, I can confirm that four of them have significant lower limb injuries uh, and were trapped in the carriages for quite some time. Uh, of the other 12 uh, patients, we now believe that they will all be walking wounded patients uh, and the delay has just been extricating them from the cars. Um, of the four critically injured with lower limb injuries, uh, two of them uh, have gone to the Royal Stoke University Hospital and two of them have gone to the University Hospital of Coventry and Warwickshire as trauma centres. Can I ask you, are there any people still on the ride? At the time of the briefing, as we left to come for this briefing, there were still four people on the ride, but we were hopeful that they would, working with fire colleagues, we would extricate them within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So, not looking at me, what's the, what's the difficulties of getting them off the ride? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not clear on the detail of that at the moment. There's been a lot of criticism of uh, the people we've spoken to who have left saying, first of all, the ride, there were problems with the ride, they weren't allowed on it to begin with, and then they told the operators there was a car at the bottom. Can you make any comment on that? They were warning the operators that there was an empty car at the bottom of the... Um, well, I, I, I'm not sure I can pass comments on that. I think it forms part of our investigation, which we need to complete fully, uh, along with the health and safety executive. Uh, I don't think it would be right and proper to comment on that at the moment. I think, you know, as I, as I said earlier, our main concern at the moment is with the care and support that we need to give to the injured people and their families. But what was the problem with the ride earlier in the day? Well, a few minutes before the accident. Well, as I say, I, that's forming part of our investigation. I can't answer that question at the moment. What about the talk that there were earlier issues with this ride going back over a year? Well, we, we you know, this this ride has had, um, you know, it's it's had its issues to start with, which is fairly normal for a big roller coaster. Um, I think it would be unfair to uh, reflect on those issues which were originally part of the ride when we first opened it and, and say that they are connected to this incident, which I don't believe they are. A lot of the people coming out said that your staff were more concerned with clearing the area of people rather than actually getting to the people in the cars. I, I can't really comment on that. I mean, I, th I think my staff, uh, the whole of this resort, um, is extremely caring towards our visitors, which we have many of. Um, their first thought would have been for the safety of our guests and I think that that comment um, is, is really to the fact that they would have been trying to facilitate the care of the individuals that were stuck on the ride. We were being told that even people who were the relatives of those on the ride were being ushered away while they were protesting against that. Well, I've not heard that. I can't really comment on that. I think one of the things that's really important in this situation is to allow the emergency services to get on scene, to clear a clear scene of operations, to allow the emergency services to do their job that they're, they're trained and they plan to do. So it'd be quite normal to evacuate the area as soon as possible to allow the emergency services to come in and put into place their well worked plans. And to put that into context, um, there is well over 40 vehicles here from the various emergency services um, onto that access road. Um, equally, the cars are not at, not at ground level, um, so the cars have been above ground level. Um, therefore, around the staff clearing the area to allow the emergency services to get into those cars, which have been suspended above the ground level. Can I ask you about those four people who are significantly injured? You said significant lower limb injuries. Can you give us an idea of the, the details of that? Are we talking legs? Are we talking pelvis? Is it? So it's, it's mainly lower leg, below knee, below knee crush type injuries. And you I, say they're serious, are we worried for their lives at all, these life-threatening life injuries? All four patients have been seen by some fairly senior trauma doctors here on scene. Um, we're not immediately concerned that any of those injuries are life-threatening, but they are significant uh, injuries that people have sustained. So can you confirm how many are on the ride, left on the ride, still to get out of the ride? What's being done to release them and how long do you think this is going to take? I mean, they've already been there four hours. Four and a half hours. The, the information we had at the start of this briefing was that there were four people still on the ride. Now this is always going to be a difficult and a protracted incident. We've got to try to think of the, the safety of those people that are trapped and work with advice from both the, the Parks Road Rescue Team and our colleagues from the Ambulance Service to prioritise and make sure that what we do in terms of the rescue doesn't compromise or further cause difficulty or injury to those casualties trapped. As for the injured, it was said that there was two boys and two girls and there were teenagers 
Can you give us any idea yeah. how, so what, what kind of ages really, or yeah, whether so the company done up? Ninety-five percent of the Pete sixteen that have come off of the rider in their middle middle twenties. Um, two females that went to Royal, Ch uh, Royal Stoke are, are in their mid twenties, as are the two males that have gone to University Hospital Coventry and Warwickshire. Um, were they, are, were, they all, were they all together? Were they on a day out together? Uh, no, we believe we believe they're separate couples. They are couples, but they're separate couples. Could I just say, in, in support, obviously there is a, a number of families out there who will be very concerned that have had relatives, friends that have attended Alton Towers today. The view of that, a casualty bureau has been set up um, to assist Alton Towers who have been receiving a high volume of calls. So can I now provide you with a number and stress to any relatives, friends out there who have concerns, please contact the uh, casualty bureau to take Bureau and we will do everything we can to assist their families. The number is 0800 056 0154. I repeat 0800 056 0154. Can you possibly tell me where the four injured, seriously injured people are from? Are they local at all? Oh, I don't have that information to hand. And until we've notified relatives with colleagues and the police, I don't think that's Ian, can I just ask, is this the most serious incident that you've had in your career here at Alton Towers? Well, I've been here six years and uh, yes, it's the most serious uh, incident that I've experienced. What about in the history of Alton Towers? Well, I think it's fair to say that in the history of Alton Towers, this is probably the most severe incident. Can you give us some idea of the history of the Smiler? Because it does break down regularly. Do you have any, in terms of, uh, you know, figures, how many times has it broken down in the last year? Or uh, I, I can't give you an exact figure. I mean, all rides have days where they break down. I don't think there should be any connection to breakdowns to this incident. I don't, I, I don't think they're related. Um, it's, you, you know, and I have to be uh, fair in that. In, in the, it, is, it is accurate to say that all rides, all big coasters, have their days where they have issues. So did but you they know are, there they was are, a problem with this ride before the accident? Did you know there was a problem with Is one thing human error could have played a part in this thing? Oh, I honestly don't know, um, but I would reiterate that that will form part of our investigation, which we are conducting with the Health and Safety Executive. How quick is that investigation likely to be done? I, I can't answer that, I don't know. I think I would have to have further conversations with the Health and Safety Executive uh, to determine that. But, you know, let me reiterate, please. Um, that our main concern is with the injured people and their families. And how long is it going to be before the people that are stuck on the ride? I mean, is it going to be hours that are left on that ride? I already answered that for you, and we are hopeful that they will be off very, very imminently. Right. Now listen, boys and girls, we have got an ongoing incident here, and we've tried to balance the needs here for coming to speak to you. One more, Because please. we are aware that a number of you are here and have been good enough to attend, but we have still got a live incident going on. Now we are planning, uh, once we get back here, I physically have to chair another meeting with the multi agencies in 10 minutes. We will come back to you, with, this is the first of the press conferences. But Just one more, when's the ride set to be open again, or is it going to be an investigation that we're going to be able to the investigation is done? Well, the ride won't open again uh, until the investigation is uh, concluded. Is it fair to say this okay. is a catastrophic so, failure right, in terms it's of operations? Good. I mean, it's not that the ride broke down, there was a car, Actually, an empty car on the line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't I don't think I can answer that question because I don't know. I mean, I need some part of the investigation. <laughs> okay, thanks very much.